Welcome to Build with Rob. Taking you, taking you deep today, taking you deep today. I already uh, am pushing myself into this unrealistic level of like, you know, how this guy operates. And now I'm here to tell you I've found another completely unrealistic level. That is the abundance vortex. And I cracked the code for it and I'm living it right now. And I don't plan on ever stepping out of it. Because the most incredible part about the abundance vortex of being in that high energy and attracting all of these things that are pushing you towards your goals, your visions, your dreams, is it is the most fun way to exist. It is literally the most magical way to live life. Because it is so mind-blowing, the amount of things that happen that are completely unexpected that push you towards realizing the goals and the visions and dreams that you have on a nonstop basis. And I'm going to share with you sort of the process that I went through uh, to discover what my what I needed to do to get into this abundance vortex. And look, I know it's inspirational. I know. I know you're like, man, like this, I can't wait to get there, Rob. Tell us more. How do we create our own abundance vortex? And look, I know every single one of you have the ability to create your very own abundance vortex. And for me, you know, it took me many years to get to this place of understanding of what was the energy and this feeling of of attracting all of these things into my life on a really consistent basis. Like, how was I able to generate this? And how was it able to actually be something that can be replicated? And ultimately for me, it was how could it be something that I could actually create to where it was the only way that I lived. And it, it was elusive to discover. It was very elusive to discover. And it was a process that took what I'd consider many years um, that required, you know, tracking how I was feeling at dif different really high energy states and adding it to my milestones and only... When I was presented with a new technology, did I realize um, that it was a culmination of how I'd organized my time, my life, and ultimately my health that led to me to figure out the formula for the abundance vortex. And I am going to share with you my formula for the abundance vortex at the end of this episode. After I walk you through the journey of how I even, you know, came up with a concept that, that, that even is the abundance vortex. But, you know, just to, to give you context, it is this, in, this incredible, incredible feeling, you know. And I talk a lot about when you, you know, get really good at designing time and use your present moment with intention and whether you're experiencing the present moment or creating a better future and you get in that rhythm and that loop to where you love everything you do all day and can't wait for what you're going to do next week, next month, later that year, like that is this incredible energy that I have been living in for a very long time. And it is still filled with you know, highs and lows inside there and unexpected things and mismanaged expectations and things you were excited about that didn't turn out quite the way you wanted and which is all a part of life. But I never actually ever reached this elusive, super high energy state that I felt like I was tapped in to the universe to the point where it's just answering questions for me that I never asked. And like uh, the right opportunities and people coming into my life immediately that are, are pushing the ideas and the visions that I have forward out of nowhere, unexpectedly, unplanned, unexplained. That's what happens in this state that I would experience from time to time. And so I started tracking um, 
this through milestones, right? And and I and I say this more to this idea of when you're trying to optimize your entire existence over the long term, uh, when you have extraordinary moments in life or energy or feelings or moments of clarity, write them down. Write them down so you can go back and, and look at them over time to eventually unearth what you need to actually do to create that on a more consistent basis or know what created that in the first place. And that's something that I have added to my milestones over the years that allowed me to ultimately over the last few years uh, identify the abundance vortex, name the abundance vortex, and then come to this incredible realization of what actually was causing it ever since I have just been living in the abundance vortex. And again, here, here I am, here I am. I'm off the rails. I'm off the rails. Cause you know, I already, uh, am pushing myself into this unrealistic level of like, you know, how this guy operates. And now I'm here to tell you, I've found another completely unrealistic level that is the abundance vortex. And I cracked the code for it and I'm living in it right now. And I don't plan on ever stepping out of it because the most incredible part about the abundance vortex of being in that high energy and attracting all of these things that are pushing you towards your goals, your visions, your dreams is it is the most fun way to exist. It is literally the most magical way to live life because it is so mind-blowing the amount of things that happen that are completely unexpected that push you towards realizing the goals and the visions and dreams that you have on a nonstop basis. And I'm going to share with you sort of the process that I went through uh, to discover what my what I needed to do to get into this abundance vortex, right? And I don't know that it's the same for every person. And I think it could be different depending on, you know, what stage of life you're in and and what different things affect you. But what I do know without a doubt is it's really about getting your mind into this place of incredible clarity. Right, because the mind is the absolute cornerstone of abundance. It's the beginning and ending of everything that you will ever want, need, feel, or do. And so getting your mind into such a sharp place that it's seeing the world in a much deeper level, a more dynamic level, making better decisions, being more strategic, being more clear – that is, that is how you get to a place of beginning to manipulate the universe and create the level of energy that attracts all of the things that you need to realize your goals, your dreams, your visions. It all starts with your mind. You know, the universe reacts to your mind. Anything that you want in this life, anything that you do in this life, you have got to generate it through your mind in order for it to ever become a reality. And it does not matter what it is. And so when you back into it and think, well, okay, the sharper you are, the clearer you are, the deeper you think that this opens sort of this portal, the energy that attracts uh, all of the things that you need, including giving you the ideas uh, to push forward, to shape reality and move things towards you all happens when your mind is as sharp and as clear as possible. And, and for me, man, I could begin to feel it. I could begin to feel and understand it. And I would equate it to the feeling that you have when you go on a health run for the initially, right? When you start working out and eating clean again, oh God, you just, there's this energy to it and you feel so amazing and it, and it never seems to last. Like it's, it's almost like 
you know, just the fact that you made this big change and got motivated, got your body moving and now eating clean for a little bit. Like it, there's this deeper level of energy, fulfillment and clarity that comes along with that that fades as you fade and just sort of slip a little bit on the diet and, and, and move away from the discipline, right? That's sort of, you know, this sort of natural process. And I would go through that throughout my life. And I always sort of looked at it as like, well, okay, that must be uh, just part of the process. You know, it's, I don't know what you would call it. It's just that placebo effect and the energy with like, like getting healthy, you know, kind of, kind of generated uh, that aspect, you know, and, and to me, um, I really began to notice it in, in 2021 when I had a deeper data set. Right. Because now, you know, since I met somebody that was able to take all the data that I was collecting and aggregate it and show it to me in dashboards, now I'm looking at like, okay, look at your quality of life numbers when you're focused on all of these health things. When you're not drinking and you're eating clean and meditating and getting good sleep, look at the change in your qualitative numbers of your quality of life. And that, so that was like this, this huge awakening at the beginning of 2021 of like, man, look at how much health is affecting my, my overall quality of life and the energy that I'm feeling because, you know, you, you know that it does, right? But keeping it sustainable and, and balancing it with, oh, you got to live life too, you know, this, this paradigm that we all lived in and I, well, and I say we all live in, I used to live in it where it's like you, you know, you want to be healthy, but like you feel like, oh, part of life is like being able to let go and, and get wasted for a couple of days, turn into a week, turn into a three month slot eating cheeseburgers. And you know what happens then? Fat to flat real quick. So, sorry. <laughs> flat to fat, you know what I mean? Flat to fat. I went reversal because that's the new me. Um, but again, when I started looking at all that data and really realizing how like committing to health, like, you know, greatly affected my quality of life, that it, that it changed me. Right. And so like when I went into 2021, it was big, big evolution for me because now I had sort of these metrics that I could be committed to, to raise my quality of life that were easy to follow. I knew if I did 80% of my health, uh, quantitative stuff that I tracked each day, did I get up before five, eat clean, brain train, meditate, get in the gym, take supplements. If I did, if I, if I tracked those health things, and then if I did it 80% of the time, that that would drive up the quality of life that I would track as it related to how I felt about my life, my work, and my health, right? And, and of course, when I committed to the health side, that gave me higher energy, more clarity. I got better at making decisions, balancing my time better, um, being able to look further into the future, be able to just continually assess and optimize on a better level, and boom, 2021 was this breakout year for me as it related to being much more consistent with my health. And, and then I began to, to, to find this other level depending on how committed I would get. Right. And so the first time that I really recognized it was like, I'm, I made a note in uh, in my milestone tracking. And, and again, I'm why I love this idea of tracking every significant thing in my life on a yearly basis and putting a date to it is not, not only are, are you kind of keeping a record of breakthroughs and different aspects of your life that um, are meaningful and, and part of your growth, but then you can always reflect on it and look at how far you've came. You can look at like sort of, you know, the amount you've done in a short of period or how much your ideas have changed over years. It's just this really fascinating way to be able to look at your life as a whole 
and something that I've been committed to since 2017 to, to track and log every milestone that, that I've been, that have been major in my life. And this particular one in spring of 2021 is clear body, clear mind. It's clear to me that not putting anything in my body after 3 p.m. is resulting in complete clarity and focus. It is a cornerstone of energy and quality of life, you know, and like why I noted that is I began to, you know, be really committed to intermittent fasting and I began to immediately feel the difference in like just how sharp I was just how sharp I was and why I made it a milestone is because like when I committed in the spring to just like, you've got to be much more diligent, um, with your diet, all of a sudden, all of these crazy things started happening. You know, we were trying to launch this show and didn't know how to do the show. Didn't know who could make the show with us in that period where I'm starting to feel this energy of attracting everything, um, I get a resume from someone that used to work at Forbes Media, and I'm like, what? What? I should reach out to Kyle Kramer, who was the head of Forbes, Forbes Media, like, and immediately reached out to him of like, hey, we got this resume. Would you have any interest in building this show? And boom, he's he's able to build the show and becomes the cornerstone of what it becomes today. But it was like, again, I started feeling that. I wanted to launch the foundation. And out of nowhere, we meet Charles Choice, who was an entrepreneur who went through uh, the build program when he was a teenager and launched his own company and now wants to get into philanthropy. It's like, what? What? How could you even meet a more incredible person? And I'm just like, this is it. I'm, I'm in this crazy energy where I'm attracting all this stuff out of nowhere. I get an email. I had made a random investment in the UFC two years earlier, and I get a call from Ari Emanuel letting me know that, like, hey, we're acquiring it, and we're going to pay you four times on your investment. Um, you know, I made, I invested two hundred fifty thousand, got a million dollars that day, and it was like, this is something's crazy going on. Like I was talking about it. And, and from the lens of I'm just feeling this energy, I don't know what it is. And then boom, I am, you know, randomly get the pitch for Joe Lee. And then, then when I, I talk through with Ryan about the vision for Joe Lee, I'm like, man, this is it. Another, this is the type of portfolio company that we're looking for because this is the business model. The entrepreneur understands the seven core capabilities. That was all. In a week's time. That wasn't like over some like, oh, that stretched out. That was a week in the spring, which made me then like lay down this milestone of clear body, clear mind. You know, of like, man, you, I was just beginning to see that like, man, when I get really militant with all of my health at breast, but get extra militant with the diet, this, this energy kicks up, right? And then, you know, I wasn't sure. I wasn't entirely sure. You know, I'm not ready at this point in 2021 in the spring as everything is really evolving and coming alive to say that there's some sort of universal connection to how clean I eat. I'm not ready to make that, I'm not ready to make that leap. You know, again, I just felt like it was the same sort of thing. Like I refocused in the spring, got and you know started doing intermittent fasting, and boom, um, here's this this new level of energy that that began to fade, began to fade. And so, as I began to go into the summer in 2021, and um, I began to fade on what I'd consider a clean diet was altogether. Right. So I would give myself credit, but I would still, you know, I'm putting creamers in my coffee, a little bit of sugar, uh, having sugar in my coffees, doing sweeteners in the afternoon, you know, having, you know, tacos because they're gluten free and, you know, a chips and guac. I'd still give my credit for diet. My body's still lean. You know, I'm, you know, but I'm, 
you know, I'll, I'll, you know, dabble in doing, you know, a donut here, having a piece of cake here or there as it's related to um, holidays and celebrating, you know, where I would eat it. Like I was just really monitoring, measuring my, my body fat. And as long as I stayed lean, okay, that's what I measured, you know, even though, you know, the energy wasn't quite the same. I just looked at like, okay, that was just like, you know, this weird sort of moment in time in the universe. Because you know when we you've had it and you've gotten into a place where like life is like everything's clicking and feeling amazing and there's all these X factors that you can put against that that it's really hard to pin it down on one thing. And I couldn't pin it down on diet because how could the diet like have that much to do with everything? And my whole life as a whole was at this entirely different level based off of my commitment to health as a whole as it relates to uh, spending 80% of my time as a goal, uh, 80% of my, my, my weeks and year of doing meditating, working out, eating clean, not drinking, taking supplements, brain training, my core quantitative tracking for raising my qualitative scores and how I feel about my life. So I looked at it as one big thing as opposed to ever looking at just uh, diet alone or is there even some way because it's like all parts of my life are, are uh, evolving and growing to this this much higher place rather than looking at anything specifically and so in August of 2021 I made another note in the milestones and this one is the undeniable diet Despite this being my most focused year as it relates to diet, I have, I have had a profound clarity as it relates to what I put in my body. I refocused on lean meats and veggies twice a day with no snacks and very little sugar, and this has pr produced extraordinary results. It's not only the diet I must follow, it keeps me lean and clear of mind. It truly makes me the best version of myself in all aspects, right? And that's like the um, this moment where I kind of like got back into like, man, you know, it really is what you put in your body. It really is what you put in your body when you like eliminate all where you where there is no more like, hey, I'll have a cookie here, a donut here. I'll put some sugar in my coffee here. Like, you know, I have a Gatorade here or there. I'll still eat like when I shifted back into eat super clean and don't snack and limit the sugar. Oh, man, that energy started coming back. And, and when that energy came back, boy, it felt like this time, like, man, I'm really tapping into something extraordinary. And 10 days later, I made this note. 10 days into this new diet, I have discovered a new level of energy that I call the abundance vortex. An energy so high, I can feel myself accelerating towards the vision and attracting everything that I need to achieve it. That was the moment of really being like, man, this is like, this is like a diet thing that is like really creating this deep clarity in this energy. And then two days later, out of nowhere, after Thrill One Super Jacket Street League being in market to sell for over four months and not having anybody making any bids on it, out of nowhere, Two, on, on four days later, out of nowhere, somebody did not just come in and say, hey, we'd like to, uh, you know, take a look at, at acquiring this. A group just delivered a term sheet for $300 million to buy Thrill One. And on the days leading up to that term sheet hitting down, I kept saying, to everybody, man, I am in the abundance vortex right now, and the term sheet is coming. You know, we knew it was out, out in in the market, and I just kept saying, man, I can feel the energy. There's so many things like evolving and coming into my life right now, and I know the term sheet is coming. 
and and despite all the other groups that were doing the diligence and the prospect that I thought it was coming from, it really came from someone completely random that was a friend of mine. That was a complete friend of mine and literally the destiny and ultimate person to be the one that acquires this and changes my life. And it did. And I just was like, man, it's the abundance vortex. And in that same time, there was all this clarity of like, nope, this is what we're going to do. Like, really, we're going to end up creating a software. It's that's how we're going to to realize the philosophy at the highest level as a business. This is going to turn into a series of content and and a book about the philosophy, like all of that in that same time was just revealing itself because I now had this depth of clarity. When I go through those milestones, it's all these breakthroughs of the structure of the company, all the breakthroughs of, of how even the machine method worked and how we looked at the seven core capabilities, like all of these breakthroughs stacked against that period that soon faded away. It soon faded away. And, and again, I just looked at it as like this is something that just happens in different moments in time and you build up this energy and you attract all these things, but it's not sustainable. Until I get to the spring of 2023. And for me, what am I doing? I'm living the absolute complete best year of my entire life, right? What a, it is, it is, you know, you know, bar none, the most committed I've been to uh, my health, my discipline, all aspects of life. It's the greatest year um, that I have ever had. I am 100% <laughs> to this day uh, have not skipped not one aspect of my quantitative health stuff. So instead of having the 80% commitment this year, is like I'm going, I'm going, um, you know, Hundred percent. And my my goal in 2021 was like, hey, the goal would get your qualitative total score if it's zero to ten for all three over twenty. If you do eighty percent of your health quantitative data, and then this year it was like, no, you're you have just broken through to another level. Let we're going to do it every day, forever. And then what did that do? It drove these qualitative numbers up to the highest level they have ever been. It, my quality of life, my decision making, the, the people that I continue to hire and put around me to help realize the, the bigger vision, the quality of uh, energy in my existence from the moment I get up till I go to sleep, the excitement for today uh, and the excitement for next week and, and the excitement for the future, it is just this incredible, incredible energy. And then I decided, okay, it's time to take my health to the even next level. And that's approach longevity and really go deeper and beyond just blood work, but into biological age and, and testing for uh, cancers and genetic testing and heart scans and brain scans and full body scans, all this. And along that route, the uh, person that I'm working with to help me to design all this told me I should also get a glucose monitoring patch, essentially checking your blood sugar, you know, and basically a nutritionist would read and see sort of how your blood sugar worked and then um, help you create a, a nutritional plan that's more effective because, um, you know, having balanced blood sugar is sort of this pathway to reduce, uh, you know, how much coffee I drink and, and uh, a clouded brain and brain fog and these type of things. I'm like, okay, great. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. And I don't know if you've ever been through one of these, but they are, you know, it's like you got it injected in you. It's a pretty interesting process. Now I'm used to it, but I popped it in there and I just go about my healthy business and I start looking at this uh, continuous glucose monitor and what I, I'm eating completely healthy and you see my blood sugar spiking all over the place. And I'm like, what? What? So this almond milk that I use with my coffee in the morning is spiking me and then crashing me and like oh like I'm like you know 
snacking on an apple that I think is ha- healthy is spiking me. And then, uh, cause empty stomach. Now I'm beginning to like, I gotta, it, you know, let me see what it takes to like get my glucose going. And then I, I begin to read on glucose and it, it, it talks about, you know, how you need to, you know, start with veggies, then proteins, and then add any starches or rices in order to keep their, your blood sugar level and all these benefits to a balanced blood sugar and all this stuff. And I'm like, it's less about, um, you know, anything other than like, I'm just trying to get to a place to be as healthy as possible. But as I balance that blood sugar, it took me back to that similar clean diet. It took me back to that, like, you're eating lean meats and veggies uh, uh, twice a day and now snacking on almonds instead of an apple. And once I balance that blood sugar, the vortex opened. The vortex opened. And, And for me, it was the most shocking revelation because as the abundance vortex really kicked up, It became for the first time that I had clear, quantified evidence that what was creating it was balancing my blood sugar gave me the depth and the clarity in my mind that then created this much deeper level of understanding of everything that was happening in my world and how I could shift it. And then created an energy in me that now is just drawing in one thing after another that is blowing my mind. And through all these years of starting first with, oh, it's fasting. Then it's like committed to this diet and now validating that the way for me to create this incredible high level of energy that then creates this depth of clarity that allows me to shift reality and then attract all of these unimaginable things on a continuous basis that are pushing me further and further towards my dreams, my goals, my visions has been unlocked for me. And again, why I I put it on this unrelatable level um, is I had to grow to this level of health and then add this tool in order to unlock this and discover this is actually how I began to create the Abundance Vortex over the last couple years. And now I have locked into it. And I ain't never leaving. I ain't never leaving. I don't, I, when, I, when I add this milestone to my current milestones, I am going to look back on it as this is like the beginning of the rest of your life. That's how significant it is to me. Because it's like now I am just living in a level of energy that I knew existed but I didn't think was possible to be this consistent or actually be created. And when you look at that formula, it is being highly committed to uh, your health and tracking it and being disciplined and being hyper aware of your energy and how you feel and optimizing your time and your life into it. So that you can even discover this higher level and have a tool that isn't for reaching another level of energy and clarity and abundance, but you could recognize that you could use it to get your mind to a place of such clarity and your energy so high that you know that you are creating an abundance vortex, then you get to live in that forever. That is what I have evolved into over this two-year period and what I have recently discovered. And again, I wanted to share this with you, not as it relates to, you know, hey, man, you're already so out there with everything that you do, but more from the lens of like your mind is everything and you're taking care of your body to, to make your mind sharper, your energy higher. You're not doing it um, so you look good. You know, you are wanting to get as healthy as you possibly can so your mind is as clear as possible so you can be the absolute best version of yourself, which in turn creates the highest energy, which then attracts all the things that you need and the things you didn't realize you needed. 
that is what you can get to when you chase the abundance vortex. And I just say to you that you each have a version of this that you've felt before. And now you've got to figure out how to optimize into it so that you can get to that high energy state that delivers the same quality of life on a completely other level that living in the abundance vortex does. Because I believe in you. Because I know you got the vision for it. I know you're willing to put in the work to figure out the path to get there. And I know since you listened to this show, you got the heart to give it all you got till you get there. Until next time, see it, believe it, do it.